Seals National Football Show. Welcome aboard. And what has to go down is one of the greatest Super Bowls I've watched in a long time. That's as good as it gets. Drama back and forth. Tremendous play. A lot of things answered. Some question marks. Um, it was a tale of two halves. Eagles dominated in the first half. Kansas City took that, that game over in the second half, coming out of halftime. Some shocking revelations come out of the game. It was a great Super Bowl. It was a great Super Bowl. Eagle fans, your coaching staff cost you an opportunity to win your second Super Bowl in five years. They were atrocious. They were atrocious, and in the second half, not only outcoached, situational play calling was awful. Was awful especially on the defensive side of the football. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. I'm going to tell you again the list that I brought up to you. It came to fruition. Josh Johnson, Brock Purdy, Daniel Jones, Davis Webb, Andy Dalton, Daniel Jones, Ryan Tannehill, Matt Ryan, Tyler Heineke, Davis Mills, Kenny Pickett, Kenny, Kenny Pickett, Cooper Rush. He got into the room with the best quarterback on the planet, and he destroyed you in the second half. And Gannon had no answers for Eric Bieniemy and for Andy Reid. None. Holy cow. Those coaches should be embarrassed. Some of the players, too. I got a list of Eagles who didn't get off the bus. Ryan says, refs gave the Chiefs this win. Absolutely a dumb comment. Even your own guy said he held them. Bradbury said it. Was it a call I would have made? No, Ryan. But don't go there. You were out-schemed. Out coached, out thought, situational play calling destroys you in the second half. Don't go with the refs. Don't be a lame ass fan. You were outplayed. There's no question those coaches just sucked out loud. Jalen Hurts was spectacular. He was spectacular. Best game of the year. Hertz was spectacular. You couldn't have asked him to do any more. Look, the fumble, I get it. It was a critical moment in the game, and it cost him big time. I get it. I'm not going to diminish the fact, though, that Jalen was not good. He was spectacular. Couldn't ask him to do any more. Your special teams finally cost you on field position in the Super Bowl. Terrible. Third worst special teams unit in the entire league reared its head. The turnover was enormous. Now, nah, man, been hearing you all year long talk down on Jalen. Defense got beat up. I don't give a shit what you heard me say, Ryan. He was spectacular. Do you want me to sit here and lie? He was spectacular. Did you see a different game? Did you see a different game? Do you actually want me to lie? I am not a sports guy that doesn't tell you what we all watched. I'm not Skip Bayless, dude. I, I'm not a denier when a guy plays well. 
What a dumbass. He was great. By the way, in the second half, you know what happened in the second half? I don't know if you guys watched this. But they were they were running these crossing patterns, and Bradbury and Slade were confused. They confused them the entire second, second half. They confused them. They were running these crossing routes, and they were trying to pass guys off. They got exposed. They could not cover Jimmy's and Joe's. Okay? They could not cover the Jimmy's and Joe. Dude, second half, they were running those crossing patterns, and it completely confused the secondary. The secondary was confused, and the defensive line didn't get off the bus. Emmanuel Sills, we got out coach Jalen Bald. He earned his contract. Let's get to the game before we start talking contract. But I will say one more time, Jalen Hurts played his ass off. He was fantastic in the game. Fangio was a consultant. Dude, you, in my opinion, there's too many voices in the room. This is a how we mistake. So you're going to bring in a consultant for the Super Bowl and have another voice in the room? No wonder it was confusion. You were doing shit that you were not supposed to be doing. This is a front office error right here. What do you think Andy Reid had consultants for the Super Bowl? It was enemy Spagnola, and it was Andy Reid. Nobody else was giving them advice on how to beat Philly. Too many voices. Too many voices in the room. Okay, that's right, Tone. They overcooked the god dang thing. You had the game won. You were in complete control. It slipped through your fingers. The Eagles had this thing. They were dominating. I'm going to go over the numbers here in a minute. You were dominating. They couldn't stop you. The Chiefs defense was decent in the first half, much better in the second half. You had this thing. Your coaches fucked this thing up. Terrible coaching. By the numbers. First down, it's pretty even, 25-21. Favor the Eagles. Here's the difference in the game and the efficiency that the Chiefs had over you. You had 72 plays. 252. The Eagles had 20 more offensive plays to the Chiefs. You kept this team under 60 plays, and they still beat you because you couldn't stop them in the second half. By the way, the kid takes the kneel down instead of going into the end zone, which was a brilliant play because at 8 o'clock, and there they were, they kicked the game winner. Instead of giving Hurts the ball back. Total yards. Eagles 417 to 340. Passing 302 to 182. Here, a microcosm of the 2021 Chiefs game. How in the world do the Chiefs outrush the Eagles? 158-114. Turnover was enormous in the game. Time of possession. You had the ball 11 minutes more. And you lost. You ran 20 more plays and had 11 more minutes. This is coaching. Or lack thereof. Hurts, 27 of 38, 304. 103 for quarterback ranking rating. 15 carries, 70 yards, three touchdowns. A guy counted for four touchdowns and 374 yards in offense. He was sensational. Mahomes, 21 of 27, 
182, three touchdowns, 131.8 quarterback ranking. This guy was almost perfect. Pacheco, 15 carries, 76 yards in the TD. He was very good. Dude, the receivers were great for the Eagles. Devontae, seven catches, 100 yards. AJ, six catches, 96. Goddard made catches. Where in the fuck was Miles Sanders? Dude, you're cut. I want no part of you. You are cut. What an absolute, unbelievable no-show. Miles Sanders, the worst performance since you've been an Eagle in the most important game. Seven million bucks, not in Philly. You're out. Dude, you're lucky I don't put your ass on a Greyhound. You were terrible. Worst player on the field was Miles Sanders. They needed you. Jalen needed you. The running attack needed you. Nowhere. And if you're hurt, that's more reason for me to dump your ass. You're gone. I am not even going to call your agent. I am going to let you find out through the media, Twitter, that you've been cut. Or we're not offering you a contract. Why? Why should I give you the decency of giving you a heads up? Why should I do that? Why? You didn't give us the decency of showing up in Glendale. Travis Kelsey, six catches, 81 yards in the touchdown. They couldn't cover him. Terrible performance by your coaching staff. Jonathan Gannon is awful, and it reared its head. You had no answers for elite quarterbacks. You can't stop them. I'm going to make a point to you guys. Here, watch this. Here is the 2021 Chiefs and Eagle game. And I want you to see the trends here. This is the 2021 game. The Chiefs ran for 200 yards, held the Eagles Eagles to 103. In the Super Bowl, the Chiefs won that again, 158 to 115. Third down. Chiefs were 9 to 10. Eagles were 6 to 12. In the Super Bowl, 4 of 8, the Eagles were 11 of 18. Dofi says Gannon cannot game plan for elite quarterbacks. He's a liability, completely a liability. He's terrible against elite quarterbacks. He's terrible. By the way, the pass rush was non-existent. Hassan Reddick did not get off the bus. Passing in the 2021 game, Hurts outpassed them here too. 358 to 271. Can you imagine this? The Chiefs had more of an imbalanced attack than the Eagles did in both games. 182 passing to 302. Check this out. You had more, more plays in the 2021. 72 to 63. Almost the same exact amount of plays that they hammered you in in 21, beating you in the Super Bowl. They basically took the same game plan because they know the coaches weren't going to be any different. This came to player accountability. Some of these guys didn't show up. But Andy Reid and Eric Bieniemy. And Spagnola knew they weren't going to do anything out of their character. They basically ran the same game plan without Tyree Kill. They beat you without Tyree Kill. 
They beat you without Tyree Kill. You had all the advantages. All the advantages. Except at the two most important places. Coaching and quarterback. And it reared its head. Nick Sirianni and that coaching staff. It was like JV varsity. And I will say this about Andy Reid. He validates himself as one of the greatest coaches of all time, winning two now. You know, we had question marks on him. Now, all answered. I actually think, too, that his time management, especially in the second half, was brilliant. The Eagles had this thing. You're going to regret this five years from now, seven years from now. You're going to regret this. Because it slipped through your fingers. The best roster, supposedly, in the history of the franchise, defensively laid an egg. Mahomes didn't have to throw for 350 yards. He had to be efficient. And efficiency scoring. They weren't going to beat Philly by kicking field goals. I know they kicked the game winner. That was with three seconds left. They had to get in the end zone, and they did. They could completely confuse the Eagles secondary. James Bradbury and Darius Slay were awful. Gardner Johnson was great. Got beat a few times, but he was. He's the best player on defense. Hassan Reddick. Awful. F. The defensive tackles. F. What was one of the things that we said, too? Hey, the Achilles heel for the Eagles is the run defense, and it reared its head again. Dofi goes, so why is Quez Watkins even on the field? That guy's a marshmallow. You got It hits you in the hands? Jalen hits you in the hands. You, to me, I'm going to, guys, do you agree? That Quez Watkins drop, in my opinion, is right in the Alshon Jeffries drop in New Orleans. I will never forget that drop. Okay? The two drops that I've seen in the last five years in Eagles history was the Alshon Jeffries drop when Foles threw him the ball and Quez dropping that ball going across the middle. Hits him in the freaking hands. I agree. It's bigger because it's the Super Bowl. But Andy took the same game plan out. He knows how to beat Jonathan Gannon and Nick Sirianni. He knows. Run the ball against them. Eagles can't stop the run. Hey, and by the way, one more time. Jordan Davis, sorry, fat guy. You got to be better. You got to be better. You've got to be better. You've got to be a factor. The 13th pick in the draft has brought nothing to the Eagles. Nothing. Man, I guess the reason I'm so fired up today is because you had this thing. Okay, you had this. When you let greatness slip through your fingers like this, you will never in a million years, Eagle fans, football fans, hey, and, 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 and hey, watch this. Let me tell you about the call at the end of the game. Okay? Let me tell you the call at the end of the game, Bradbury. Do you make that call? Probably not. But that's not what cost the game. What cost the game is the Eagle secondary and the front four were non-existent in the second half. That's what lost you the game. You didn't stop Mahomes once. They scored on every possession. And they only had like four possessions. You, you had the game. You had it. You were in complete control. All you had to do was continued 
to run the ball. I would have I would have had Jalen Hurts run the ball more. Miles Sanders was a no show. He hurt you. Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders, Bradbury, Slay, Kaiser White, Hassan Reddick, all those guys sucked. Pride goes Hurts played his best game ever. He did. The defense has to get one damn stop. Dude, that's right. I'll say it one more time to you. Jalen Hurts was spectacular. He was spectacular. He didn't outplay Mahomes. If you're just looking at the numbers, you know how many times you guys come back to me and tell me, well, Sills, you know, the postseason for Jalen, you have to look more than just the numbers. His efficiency, they scored a touchdown every series but the last one, the game-winning field goal. He did not outplay Mahomes. He did not. Mahomes was as a, had 126 quarterback writing. Come on, man. The only incomplete pass he had in the second half was a throwaway. Don't start talking to me about efficiency. Did not outplay him. Again, Jalen was spectacular. And by the way, my friends, you don't get to call yourself outplaying someone when you lose. Don't be part of the new generation where you get a merit badge for showing up. You lost the freaking game. You don't get merit badges for that. Tone, I missed the super chat. Could you please put that up there for me? You don't get credit for that. Do you think we can rebound from this disappointment? We'll get into all this. You do not get a medal for playing well and losing. Where is that mentality? Where do, I hope you don't teach your kids that. L's, W's, this is not politics. Where you move the chains. Jalen O played Mo. No, he didn't. He lost. The fumble was a critical moment in the game on him. And it cost his team seven. In a game you couldn't make mistakes in. Any bit of field position was going to dictate that game. Jalen had one of the biggest F-ups in the game. You do not get a medal for playing well and losing. The coaching staff, again, completely did not have a feel for the game. They're not good coordinators. They're not. And there's no question that the AFC is by far better than the NFC. There's no question about it. You play bums. You play bums. And remember what I said on Friday. That the Eagle defense will either be validated or it will be overrated. It's overrated. As I've been saying all year, that defense is overrated. You couldn't make a stop in the second half against an elite guy. Then again, you've never stopped an elite guy, ever. Darius Slay, my opinion. Not worth the 17, 18 million bucks they're going to pay next year. I, I don't see it. I'd say from the Vikings game 
to the Super Bowl. He's been terrible. If Hertz doesn't fumble that ball, Hertz doesn't fumble that ball, my opinion, Eagles probably win the ball game. If Hertz doesn't play as well as he did, the Eagles aren't in the ball game. So it's a trade off. Miles Sanders, man, has to be one of the most disappointing things on the on the team right now. God, was he terrible. Man, was he terrible. Terrible. And and, and for the record, the front four, the Eagles, I think they got close a few times, but you weren't going to get Mahomes on the ground. He's too smart for you. Chaos, do Eagles bring an experienced coordinator in? I'm going to get to all this. I want to, I want to, my feelings and how I saw the game. God, I watched that first half and I'm like this. Man, they got this thing. They got this thing. All of a sudden, they started chipping away. And when they went down on that first series and scored, I said, wow. Philly's in trouble. Lovey Smith or Vic Fangio? got to be a guy with more with it's got I want more of a creator back there Chris you had it you did it was in your was in the palm of your hands Scott thank you it was in the palm of your hands you had this thing man this officially now is a turd burger 2017 beat Brady and Belichick. Remember what I told you, the reason that you'll lose. Hey, Tone, remember I said this. I said this a couple weeks ago. The reason you won't win the Super Bowl is because of your coaching staff. If Doug Peterson is the coach of this football team, this is a Howie deal here. If Doug's the head coach of that game on Sunday night, He wins it. Doug would have won that game. Doug would have won that game. With Frank, with Schwartz, they'd have won that game. Playing seven yards off the receivers killed us. (laughs) No question. Doug Peterson would have won that Super Bowl. You put training wheel coaches, and because the players had a great year, the coaches are the ones that are overrated. The players had great years. You can't sit here, and I'm not going to do this. Watch this, guys. In my opinion, they had some of them had a bad game, not a bad year. Was it the most critical game of the year? Yes. Yes. Did you want to see that in that moment? Absolutely not. But I'm not going to sit here and go like this. C.J. Gardner-Johnson played poorly this year because that's not true. Hassan Reddick played poorly this year. That's not true. That's not true. Josh Sweat had a really turn around. True. Didn't have a good Super Bowl. All that's true. Your coordinator never changed. This coaching staff has been hidden by really great play this year. They're not good. Jalen Hurts was spectacular. Doug Peterson wins that game Sunday. You need better coaching. Nick Sirianni's not the guy. He's not. You know why he's the guy in Philly? Because he's Howie's guy. How should a general manager have say on who your coordinators are in your game plan? 
This is the Howie meddling. Everyone's got a department in that office. GM, head coach, assistant coach, player. Howie Roseman also costs you here. You don't have proper assistant coaches on that staff. And these guys are up for other jobs. Man, you don't have to be very talented nowadays. You don't have to be very talented. You just do not. All you have to have is Howie knee pads. And you can get a job in that NovaCare Center. Dude, this is why Doug was fired and left. It's because of what you saw on Sunday. Inexperienced coaching. You had inexperienced coaching. Andy Reid and his staff coached the Eagles' coaches' pants off them. I don't even know why they were wearing headsets. Mahomes was good. Spectacular? I don't know. He was efficient because the coach put him in a position to be efficient. They started running those crossing routes in the second half. Jonathan Gannon didn't even know what he was looking at. Did you understand that? That Jonathan Gannon, how do you follow me? It's so frustrating. How do you stop crossing routes? You jam the receiver at the line of scrimmage. My God almighty. You want to hear this? Eric Bieniemy said this. We were confusing them in the second half. They didn't know what the crossing routes that we were running. Go back and listen to Bieniemy talking. Go back and listen. Bieniemy was saying, yeah, they didn't really pick it up. Kelsey even came out and goes like this. You know, we were starting to run our routes, and then we changed up our route, our route patterns in the second half, and it confused the linebackers. How many times did you see the wide receivers for Kansas City wide-ass open? They, by the time the Eagles recognized what was going on, it was too late. It was too late. Brother Hannibal Sirianni needed to surround himself with seasoned coordinators. Brother, I'm going to give you the best example of that. When Sean McVay got the job in Los Angeles, who did he hire? Who was his first hire? Who was the first guy that Sean McVay hired? Wade Phillips. Wade Phillips. Man. Mm. Mm. It was right there for you. You had it. You had it. It just it was it was like watching a piece of ice in a in a cup just melting. And as you got to the fourth quarter, you just knew there was no stopping it. The best roster in Philadelphia Eagle history and the worst coaching staff in the this is like Rich Kotai shit. Not being able to identify what they're doing to you. You were dominating them. Dude, I, I, I was like this. Philly's got this thing, man. Philly's got this thing. You got it. I was like, they got this. Scored on that touchdown coming out of the half. I'm like, man, that's the one thing you couldn't do. It was a it was halves of momentum. It was momentum. 
And once Kansas City grabbed the momentum, man, it was a freight train. Juju had a good game, Small. He did. He had a really good game. Mahomes and Andy Reid and those guys put themselves in Eric Bieniemy. Eric Bieniemy and the entire coaching staff for Kansas City. Boy, I'll tell you something. If you could keep that guy and all those coaches there, look at what they had. They had a rookie end. They had two corners that were rookies. And because they have an elite quarterback and an elite coach, they're in every ball game. Every ball game they're in. GT, Hurts was spectacular. Let me let me expand more on Jalen Hurts. I have been very critical of that style of play, and I still am, and I'll always be, because there's not a long shelf life. But I think Jalen Hurts is going to get back into the laboratory, and I probably think you're going to see an even better version next year of this kid. If I was the Philadelphia Eagles, I would get to the table as quick as I can and offer this guy three years at $45 million and see if they bite on it. If not, you might want to carry this into next year and both the organization and Jalen Hurts roll the dice the same way Lamar Jackson did. Here's where I'm going with this with Jalen, okay? If Jalen Hurts puts up another year like this, if I'm Jeffrey Lurie, I don't mind overpaying. I want to see him do it again. To be, You know what the word elite means in the NFL? The guy in Kansas City is putting a resume together that's elite. It's not one year shit. It's consistently every year being in the AFC title game. It's consistently putting up the big numbers. It's consistently being in that conversation as the best guy in the league. Jalen played great in a game. He did. Still didn't win it. By the way, Burrow hasn't won one yet either. And Joe Burrow and Jalen Hurts are pretty much in the same category right now. When it comes to resumes. I'm not talking ability. I'm talking resumes. In my opinion, elite means consistent. And if Clutch doesn't want to bite on three years, 45 million, I'm going to go into the year in his rookie contract and let's see him do it again. And both will be betting on themselves. And if you're the Eagles, once that season's over, I don't mind paying him. 50 million if he if Jalen Hurts does it again who's gonna mind paying him 50 if he doesn't take the three years 45 I'm gonna go into the year with the last year of his rookie contract because I got to keep my team together how he's got to keep that team together I wrote down all the free agents again we're gonna look at that here in a minute And we put it on an extension. So I get that year still on his rookie deal. Nick goes, what happens if he doesn't do it? I'll have to overpay like the Cowboys did for Dak. That's what will happen. Because remember something, when the year ends, the new NFL season doesn't start until March 12th of the following year. You can still get a contract done. And you're, you're always going to make the most money where your feet are. Eagles had this. Jalen Hurts once again played in a ball game he couldn't control. Didn't want to admit it, but defense was exposed. D coordinator, terrible special teams, even worse. Waste of talent, no preparation, no adjustments. All of that right there, slammers right on. All of that is exactly why it's so frustrating today on this Monday to listen to all of these shows and all of the excuses. 
F the call. F the year. You had 60 minutes in your hands, and you let it go. My God almighty, man, when you let greatness through your fingers, you'll never let it go. I feel for you guys. Yeah. Wow. Had the advantage everywhere except coaching. And I said it all year. Your coaching staff is not good enough. (sighs) Howie Roseman also cost you this Super Bowl. By putting inferior coaches in a position that they're in. Training wheel coordinators training will head coach. You played in a conference that really was horseshit. That whole schedule showed you kind of who you were a little bit. Not that the, no, no, follow me here. The schedule didn't expose your players. They had great years. They exposed your coaches. That schedule is more about the coach's inability you want me to give you examples? By the way, it's not the players. The players were not exposed. They just didn't play well. You don't have 19 weeks of great ball and all of a sudden, you just, it happens like that. The coordinators put them all in positions of failure. Look, I'm not letting the players off the hook here. They got to show up also. But watch this. The Chicago game was maybe the worst coach football game of the year. The Super Bowl is now the worst coach game of the year. How, I mean, and look what happened in both games. You got your quarterback injured and you lost the Super Bowl because of coaching. Dude, seriously, the coaches for the Eagles versus the Chiefs, It was varsity versus JV. Man. The Eagles had much deeper and talented roster, and I believe the better team. Andy simply outcoached Gannon. Reed was playing chess, and Gannon was playing checkers. Right on. Second half was so evident of that. I'm like, surely they're not going. Here, Help me out here. So you're running crossing routes. You're, you're, well, I'll tell you what, if I was a defensive player, I don't know how people didn't, you're running crossing routes and you're backing up like this three yards off the ball and you're allowing that space in front of the linebackers or behind the backers. You had guys running around in the field that were running into each other. Man, it was, they created chaos in the secondary of the Eagles in that game. It was chaos. How do you line three yards off the ball when you see what they're doing to you? They were basically almost running illegal picks on you. And you were biting on them. I saw TJ Edwards and Kaiser White run into one another. I'm like, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're seeing. You know why? You haven't played elite quarterbacks. They had 52 plays. You had 73. They were 10 times more efficient than you. Every time they touched the ball, it was positive yardage. Put it this way, it sucks to be a Bird fan right now, and I feel bad for for Hurts. I would too. But then again, watch this though, Maniac. You won't be feeling too bad for him in a couple weeks if he takes that three-year, $45 million deal. Andy Reid had 14 years in Philly. He never won shit. Stop calling him a Hall of Fame coach. He is a Hall of Fame coach. Two Super Bowl wins? Are you crazy? 
He's got a, a miracle worker at quarterback. What are you, nuts? What are you, crazy? <laughs> That's like saying Pete Carroll. Well, Pete's not a Hall of Famer now because he didn't do shit with the Jets and the Patriots. That's not true. Pete Carroll's going to the Hall of Fame because of what he did in Seattle. Okay? He's going to the Hall of Fame because of what he did in Seattle. This is not George Seifert here. Okay? This is not Steve Mariucci. Andy Reid is Mike Holmgren. He's a modern-day Mike Holmgren. Okay? A modern-day Mike Holmgren. Andy Reid is a better coach than Mike Holmgren. Trade Slay, signed CJ, linebackers, four top 100 picks. Savvy DC. Mike Holmgren's not a better coach than Andy Reid. Mm. Andy Reid's got two Super Bowls now in the last five years. I don't know about you. And conference championships. And the kid Patrick Mahomes, he's 27 years old. He's got two Super Bowl MVPs. I don't know about you, but the only guy I can think of that has done something like that, I think, is the guy who was up in New England. Yes, it's fully guaranteed, Bob. That's the only way they would take it. It's fully guaranteed. Andy Reid has now cost the Eagles two Super Bowls. <laughs> That's a way to look at it. I hadn't thought of that. Andy Reid had a prime McNabb and Vic and still could not. Yeah, you know why, James? Too many roosters in the hen house in Philly. Too many roosters in the hen house. Your organization is run by your GMs, not your head coach. And it will always be a problem. Your head coach is not the decision maker in football decisions. Your general manager is. Your general manager put those coaches in that building. And this is a prime example of getting out coached. What's the one thing Jerry Jones has never been able to replace? Jerry Jones has replaced talent on his roster. He's never been able to replace what? a Super Bowl coach and Jimmy. He never replaced the Super Bowl coach and Jimmy Johnson. And it will be the death spike to Jerry Jones when he's all said and done. It will be the death spike. He couldn't get along with a Super Bowl winning coach. You had this thing. <laughs> Look at the coach. Hey, you know the glaring difference between the 2017 and the 2022 Eagles? Coaching. Glaring. It's glaring. It's glaring. How do you not go like this, man? We had a backup quarterback and still Doug Peterson coached the pants off of Belichick and Brady. Can you imagine if Doug was a Super Bowl coach Sunday night? Shit. He wins that thing. They beat an they beat one of the greatest teams of all time that year in 17. Okay? with a lesser roster than you have right now. The lesser roster won the Super Bowl. Why? Better coach. Wait a minute. The lesser roster last night won. Case closed. Would we not agree? The lesser roster won the game last night. Would we not agree to that? Well, what's that? What's that an element of? What's that the element of? Bad coaching. The lesser roster 
won the Super Bowl. You know, it goes back to my comment, would you rather have a $50 million quarterback or the better roster? Last night, a $50 million quarterback won that. God, you had this. Dude, you know, you had the guy on the... It's like you had them on the ropes. Jeffrey Laurie was quick to fire a guy like Peterson for a coach, more amenable in his desires. Can you put that back up there for me, uh, Tone? I want to make sure I read that super chat there, please. Almost as if he wants Jerry Jones-type control. It's exactly right. The general manager has the most power in the building in Philly, not your coach. In Kansas City, your coach has the most power. Dan, I feel you are just as upset about this loss as, uh, as us. I want to thank you for being part of the 2022 journey with us. Much love to you, my friend. Anton, I'm going to say this to you, Anton, and I traditionally don't give um, merit badges out for effort. But I'll tell you something. They had a great year. The Eagles had a great year. A great year. Something that they can build on. There's going to be a lot of energy at the Novacare Center. This one hurts. You know why it hurts? Because you know how close you were. Hey, it's one thing to get your doorknobs knocked off. It's another thing to be right there at the altar. And, you know, the bride says no. That's exactly what this was. You had bought all the invitations. You got the church. You, you've got the post uh, ceremony party ready to go. And she says no at the last second. That's what this is like. You know, you get the, you get the carpet pulled out from under you here. Still's a veteran head coach will not coach in Philly under Howie's thumb and surveillance. Bob, amen. Everyone knows that. That's why you have no veteran coaches on the coaching staff. Because a veteran, you know, I keep hearing people say Seth Joyner for DC. Do you actually think they'd allow a guy like Seth Joyner in the building to give advice? Because Seth's not going to take any shit from a guy. They don't want that. They want to have control of the narrative. We needed one F and stop, just one. That's right, Slammer. One stop. You couldn't do it. Your general manager and his influence on the coaching staff was rearing its head in the second half. Not so much in having headsets on and such, but the inexperience was blatant. Any moron saw what they were doing that had been involved in football. You could see it. And one of the, again, the thing that really perplexed me was that, okay, look, they're running crossing routes. You know how you slow that down? Jam them at the line. You guys told me all year long. You told me explicitly all year long that you have the best corners in the NFL. How in the world, if you have the best corners in the world, are you playing zone coverage? You don't have the best corners in. Nobody in their right mind would say the Eagles have the best corners and they don't play man. How do you say that? You know why you could say that? You played stiff quarterbacks all year and they were empty calorie stats. David Mills, Kenny Pickett, come on. And a fraudulent Kirk Cousins. You guys were right on that. I was wrong. How your philosophy does not add up if you tell me you have the best corners. How can you have the best corners in the NFL and you don't play man? How? We played zone coverage. Would, hey, how, hook me up on this. Is this fair to say 
that the Eagles probably played zone coverage, what, 90% of the time all year? Is that, is that, is, is, am I right when I say that? They probably played zone coverage 90% of the time. And get this, Kansas City couldn't beat you deep. They beat you in those crossing routes. They didn't have Tyree Kill. 90% of the time, people were telling me all year long that the Eagles had the best corner duos and you never played you never played press coverage. That's not a that's not an actual and factual statement. Darius Slay ain't worth $18 million. No way. No way. Dude, that kid, Sauce Gardner, that's a shutdown corner. Eagles don't have one. That kid, CJ Gardner, I love him. It's a priority you sign him. Gannon is Jim Schwartz 2.0. Jim Schwartz got a Super Bowl ring as a coordinator. Jay Quest, that's not a fair comment. He won. Look at Steven. See what Steven just said? An elite quarterback kills zone coverages all day. Been a trait since he's been to D.C. of a year ago. Remember I told you on Friday? Jonathan Gannon ain't better. You just got better players. He's the same guy, and it reared its head in the Super Bowl. He's the same guy. He was never going to, you know, I said the Eagles would win this game handily because you had all the advantages. And Kansas City took every advantage away from you. Your O-line, your running game. Not your passing game. I thought Jalen was great. The turnover killed the whole performance. But I looked through the whole thing because if Jalen's not on the field, Kansas City blows you out. Hey, I'm convinced of this. If Kansas City had a couple more minutes on the clock, they'd have put two more TDs on you. You didn't stop them. Manster, it's not so sad. Because I think you're going to get an opportunity to keep this thing going at least for another year. And I'm, I'm going to explain at the top here. Okay? And we're going to look at those free agents and we're going to re, re-examine a little bit. Both coordinators are interviewing for jobs in the NFL. Wow. Man. I, I'm, hey, let me say this to you. I know Jim Ursay, and I know he's kind of a head case. Someone asked me a question on these guys. I'm going to go like this. I don't see it. This guy, they're two Nathaniel Hackett's, in my opinion. Watch this. Because they suck at their jobs, they'll probably be great head coaches. Mm. There's no experience on your staff. And it was, watch this. The two things that Howie Roseman has control of that he failed in that Super Bowl. He never addressed special teams and his coaching staff, he loves yes guys. Those two components were a complete factor in how the Eagles got beat Sunday night. Man. And 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 the Eagles continually protect these coordinators like they're good. Hey, by the way, where was that pass rush? Zero. Goose egg. They got to Mahomes. You, Mahomes had a bad wheel, and you still couldn't get home. Dude, lesser talent everywhere. You were right, Sills. Gannon played prevent defense the entire Super Bowl. And, and you know what, Marky Dan? 
How do you consistently tell me, not you, but how can you tell me that your secondary is the best in the league when you play against Tyler Heineke, Davis Webb, Josh Johnson, Davis Mills. These are Kirk Cousins' empty calorie stats. They had no adjustments in that ball game. I'm going to look at who's staying and who I'd get the hell out of town. And I'm going to take the entire year. And then we'll see whether or not the Eagles will be in contention. I believe they will. I believe they will. I want to do that. By the way, there's no guest today. It's just me and you. Why would I put a guest on? I'm not in a good mood. You had this thing. You know, I'd rather get my face kicked in than lose like that. I'd rather get my head kicked in. Drag me up and down the field. Kick my ass. You're the better team that day than to lose because of inexperience. Mm. And, and, it, and it's, it's something that I never thought would rear its head that bad. Okay? I'd rather have my ass kicked so bad than to lose like that. Best team in Eagle history. Laid an egg. Not the quarterback. Not Devontae. Not AJ. Shit, I thought Goddard played well. I did. I thought the skilled guys were good. Your defense was atrocious. And Mahomes made him look common. How do you, how don't, how don't you, how don't you address special teams if you're Howie Roseman, if you're running the entire roster? It's very disappointing. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Dude, again, I don't mind getting beat. With great effort, great coaching, people get beat in this sport. First trap game on turf. How he ignored special teams because he only wants credit for flashy shit, Dan. Yeah. And get this. Here's someone else who's at fault for your shitty special teams. So Nick Sirianni and all the coaches don't go to the front office and address it? Because you know why? They can't. Not playing top-tier quarterbacks all season was the downfall. Correct. Nobody on that coaching staff thought enough to go to management. Shit, when you couldn't stop the run, you went and got Linville Joseph. You went and got Dominic Sue. You mean to tell me you couldn't have gone and got a returner? Eagles were able to replace Vincent and Taylor with Brown and Shepard because we had Dawkins. I say keep CJ and replace Slay and Bradbury. I'm going to get to that. Darman, I would do everything in my power not to let Kelsey retire because he had a great year. Seals, last night's outcome gives Roseman what he loves. He can blow it up and start over. 
and start focusing on the Nova. Yeah, that's he, he loves doing that. He loves lighting it on fire and building it back up and then taking credit for building it back up, even though he's the guy that lit it on fire. Totally. They are winning. Howie got complacent with special teams. Yeah, how can you be complacent with special teams when you haven't had them all year? Well, you know, okay, because they they were winning all year. Okay, I want to look at these free agents, and I want to put a team together for you. Um, a little more on the game last night. I thought it – by the way, for the record, I thought it was a spectacular Super Bowl. I thought it was a spectacular Super Bowl. Fans were treated. You got a chance to see some really young quarterbacks. You got a chance to see a lot of talent. There's talent all over the field. By the way, for the record, Chris Jones was a force. He was a force. He crushed Sam Alu last night. He was a force. And I'll tell you how they stopped the run game of the Eagles. I'll tell you what they did. That was different than what the 49ers did and what the Giants did. Sumbra, look at the losses this year. The offense gets to the line late 10 seconds to go repeatedly. I blame coaches. Absolutely. Hour number two, it's us today, by the way. No guest. There's no need. It's us. We're going to put the pieces back together again. Okay. We're going to move forward, still looking back what happened last night. But we're going to put the pieces together here. Hour number two, hit the like button. Keep it here on the National Football Show. When it comes to the fight against insurance companies, large corporations, and the healthcare industry, injured victims are always the underdog. But that doesn't worry us. At Messon Associates, we're an injury law firm from Philadelphia, and we come to fight. Our clients know that they've got representation with a chip on its shoulder. And it's the same chip that makes Philly the toughest city in the country. Call 215-568-3500 or visit us online at messalaw.com. Messa & Associates, the toughest injury firm in Philadelphia. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. My name is uh, Fran Solano. I'm a managing director here at Dell Vale Insurance Group. Been in the business for over 36 years, saving people money on their insurance needs. Give us a call. Let us help you custom design an insurance plan that meets both your needs and budget. Did you know taxes could be your biggest expense during retirement? Are most of your assets in tax-deferred accounts like IRAs and 401ks? 
Taxes are historically low today, but we're facing significant headwinds in the future. Do you have a plan? The Thrive Financial Team has more than 100 years of experience helping people across the Delaware Valley with forward-looking tax planning. Learn how to shift your money from forever tax to no or low tax accounts. Get your Thrive Retirement Tax Playbook today. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Big Sales National Football Show. Please hit the like button. What Kansas City did to stop the Eagle run attack, they had great lane integrity. They made sure they had every lane covered. I thought the Giants got out of their lane responsibilities and integrity, and I thought San Francisco towards the second half of the NFC Championship game, trying to make things happen because the quarterback was out. I thought they gambled. Kansas City didn't gamble. They did not. They kept their lane integrity. They did not go for false reads. They did not go for false steps. They kept their lane integrity. You may not see a gigantic stat total from Chris Jones, but he was spectacular in that game. He forced everything back inside. He made sure, and for the record, outside of Hurts, nobody had any kind of numbers in the run game outside of Jalen Hurts. You take that 70 yards away from Jalen Hurts, your starting quarterback, you had 115 yards rushing, you take 70 off that, your guys were non-existent. Linebackers kept their integrity, kept everything inside out. Forced everything back inside. They set the edges well. Did everything great. They are a well-coached football team. That had to be a priority in the preparation against the Eagles. Because you know what they do? The Eagle offensive line, they have a lot of influence blocks. And a lot of guys bite on those blocks. You know how many times you see a guy crashing down, Jalen gets out wide, and he's up the field, right? You didn't see that against Kansas City at all. Kansas City kept their lane integrities. They made sure gap control was the essential. You may not make a play, but it dictated the play calling. They were so smart. You see, Kansas City wasn't looking to win a quarter. Kansas City was looking to win the game. It's like the old George Foreman adage I told you. George was never looking to win rounds. He wanted to win the fight. And in the end, Kansas City won the fight because they were a better coached, better schooled, better prepared football team than Philly. How do you beat an opponent that is superior to you in so many ways. You're better prepared. This is common freaking sense. When you've got an opponent that's got the physical advantage on you, you have to be smarter than them. And they were. They were better prepared, better coached, And they kept their patience, poise and patience. Like you said, you could look at Chris Jones's numbers and go, oh, I don't see it. I don't see it. If you watch the game, though, you watch how we turned everything back inside to the linebackers and to pursuit. Your running game was shut down completely. You know, it's one thing to shut down the Eagle passing game. But in two years, have you ever seen the Eagles shut down like that? 
in the run game. And what's funny, Andy did it to you last year too. Andy knows how to beat that team. Andy's your kryptonite. You know why? Better coaching. It's, it's for, and you're going to get a lead on Andy when you have better talent, but you've got the quarterback that could throw you out of trouble. Do you know something about Patrick Mahomes? You want to hear a stat on him? Patrick Mahomes it has like a 650 win percentage with 20 or more starts being down 10 points coming back to win. Brady's at 37%. This guy's at 650. Because you have a lead on him, you that don't mean you're beating him. Mahomes, <laughs> he's a freak of nature. You know, you know what? He, Mahomes is the greatest talent at quarterback I've seen since Dan Marino. The impact that he's having in the passing game is the same impact that Marino brought to the NFL when everyone started watching this guy throw the ball 45 times all around the yard with Duper and Clayton. Everyone was like, what is going on? Everyone ran the ball. There's still running backs in the game like there are back in the day. There's, they're all receivers today. <laughs> Look at M. Reyes. M. Reyes is now saying that Hurts is better than Patrick Mahomes. Guys won two Super Bowl MVPs, two regular season MVPs, five straight conference title games. He's got... Four AFC championship wins, and he hurts is better. And he's 27. Really? Okay. <laughs> hey, win something significant like that kid first before you start barking any bullshit like that. Love to see how Jalen responded after the turnover. I did too, Alex. I, Alex, once again, Alex, Jalen Hurts was spectacular in that game. He was spectacular. Okay? He was spectacular. I, I, don't, I, I don't think you could have asked him to do more. Okay, wait. The turnover sucked out loud for him. I felt for him on that. Jalen's going to go back into the laboratory and work even harder. I'll tell you what, man. I mean, rooting against him looks like it is a non-win proposition for people. And for me, once again, the only reason that I wouldn't want Jalen Hurts as my starting quarterback, I just don't have faith in that style of play because there's not a big Sample size of people lasting long with that style of play. It's not sustainable. 15 carries a game is not sustainable. You're going to get hurt. I think it's going to be very interesting to see if he does need the surgery that I think he does need. Yale goes he'll be better next year. Depends on what's around him, Yale. Steven goes the offense is legit. Defense got exposed. Yes, but Steven, I've been saying that that defense isn't who they are all year long. I never bought it, and you guys know this. I never wavered on that. I never wavered that that coordinator is not good enough. I completely, 100% kept telling you that guy ain't the guy because his – his style and his mentality didn't coexist with being a guy who's an innovator at coordinator. Okay? Plug and play is not a coordinator. They couldn't stop the run. He didn't fix it. How he did. Right? It wasn't that, wasn't that the prime moment you knew it wasn't him as a coordinator? He never... 
when Dan Quinn and the Cowboys had some issues stopping the run early in the year, what did he do? He came up and he schematically changed things, and the Cowboys got a little better, right? When it came to stopping the run. How did Gannon and the Eagle coaches handle stopping the run when they were 22? They got around 16 at the end of the year. They didn't schematically change anything. They wouldn't got players. That's not coaching. That's not coaching. Well, if I'm not good enough, so wait a minute. Let me ask you this. So what's the, what's the reason now that Jonathan Gannon can't stop elite quarterbacks? Last year it was talent. What's it this year? We're running out of excuses, folks. You're running out of excuses for him. Hey, Nick, you're running out of excuses. I hope Gannon gets the Arizona job. I think Steichen would be more in line for that gig. Dude, you're, you're running out of excuses. We don't have the players to run my system. Okay, so they got him. He got into the most important game of the year. He shit the bed. What's the excuse now? Players didn't show up. I guarantee you. They'll blame the players, not the coaches. Coaches don't blame players. I mean, coaches don't blame themselves. They blame players. They blame players. But the problem here is this. You've been telling us this bullshit all year long. What's your excuse now, dude? Oh, the field. The field was atrocious. The field was completely atrocious. Okay? It was. I mean, they should be they should be ashamed of themselves, the NFL, for putting that game on, on that field. That was an absolute crime to have that like that. That was terrible. I mean, the players could have got injured big time on that thing. After a while, it was hard to watch. Guys were slipping and sliding so much. It was terrible. The absolutely horrible play calling or um, refereeing, officiating, and the field itself, and the halftime show, which I thought was mediocre. I didn't think the NFL put a good show on. I think the Eagles and the Chiefs put a great show on. But I don't think the NFL did. I didn't think Rihanna was that hot. I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was great. Hey, it's cool that she's pregnant for her second child. That's great. But really, I don't know. Rihanna wasn't that hot. I didn't think that halftime performance was great. I've seen 10 times better. The field sucked. Um, I thought Fox did a nice job putting it on. But outside of that, the game was spectacular. I mean, the NFL's lucky that nobody had any devastating injuries, like uh, Yale said. Yeah, yeah, Rihanna was boring. It was a terrible show, I thought. Everyone's afraid to say that. And that's a Jay-Z production. The thing was terrible. Didn't really do anything for me. Man, I've seen... Dude, last year's was great. Last year's was awesome. I loved all the rappers in LA. I thought that was awesome. I thought I'd like to have had some more. Um, No, I thought Greg did a great job, man. I thought he did a really good job. And you know what? You, you saw the passion of a player at the end of the game when the refs made that holding call on Bradbury. That was more of a player going, man, are you really going to call that play right there? Now, see, that's a bad take by him because if it's holding – whether it's in a critical part of the game or in the beginning of the game, you call that play because it's holding, not because of the timing of the game. So that was kind of, but again, it was emotion. Okay. It was emotion, you know? So it, 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 it brought it in. You know, I mean, I'm all right with it. I text Greg and told him I, th I thought it was okay. All right. Prince and Bruno were awesome. Those were great shows. I was at the Prince show. Um, Sills, I got to give it to you. You called it about the defense all year. You know what, AT? You want to hear something that really sucks? Watch this. I really am sorry, AT, that my take was right. Man, there's certain takes that you have sometimes when you do a show. You just hope is not true. But it was. AT. I guess, thank you. You know what I'm saying, dude? 
No, you can't blame the refs. You know what? You know what? You know what I mean? Okay. You know what I mean? That's the kind of shit you don't. You don't want to be right. But Sills, you were allowing ticky tack all game, and then you wait. I I know, man. I mean. <sighs> You did have it, Chris. Man, that's the disappointing thing about this. Hey, Big Seals. How about that call come behind the line of scrimmage? Oof. Dude, I'm going to say it one more time too, man. Can, can I tell you the play that really aggravated me the most was that Quez, was that Quez Watkins drop? Okay, that Quez Watkins drop, man. Oh, my God. Seriously, first thing I thought was Alshon Jeffries. I just went like this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How do you – dude, it was – Jalen put that thing right on his hands. You've got to catch that kid. CD says Davis was a non-factor. Keep seeing 72 instead of 90. And on the fourth down line scheme, dude, he his, his rookie year sucked. Quez Watkins is a marshmallow. Got to upgrade that position. And if Zach Pascal can't do it, get his ass out of there. Dude, bring in Odell Beckham. Bring in Beckham. Bring in somebody. Bring, Hey, bring in a seasoned guy. You're not going to get a guy like DeAndre Hopkins. But bring somebody in with experience at that three-hole. Okay? Bring someone in there. Dude, can you imagine? Or how about a pass-catching running back? Might that help? How about a pass catching running back? Right? Fletcher Cox, Sue, Davis, Hardgrave, all blew out loud Sunday night. A slot guy? Yeah. Dude, you know what they need, though? Yeah, I'll take a guy like Tony Pollard. I'll take a guy like Tony Pollard. You think Sanders is gone? If Miles Sanders was on my football team, Marcus, I'd have made him take the Greyhound home. He was so bu- He was so bad. I'm not even going to tell his agent I'm not offering him a contract. I don't think I have to. I don't think I owe it to him. You know why? He didn't show up for the Super Bowl. Why should I give him the benefit of telling him we don't want him here anymore? Quez isn't number three? Well, who is? Who's your number three guy? Zach Pascal? Holy cow, you need to upgrade that position along with your special teams. Miles was disappointing. Hey, Torrance, that's an understatement of the year. Would you sign Josh Jacobs? No. No. Hey, if you learned any, hey, how many people think Jalen Hurts is elite? How many people think Jalen Hurts is elite? Okay. How many people think Jalen Hurts has solidified that where he's elite? How many people think Jalen's elite? Dibbon goes, I do. Eric, I do. Not elite. He's dynamic. He's on the way. James goes, I don't think. Not yet. I don't. Hmm. Jalen is very... Good. Top seven. Still think Jalen's worth, you mean 50, not five. He's on his way, Sills. Jalen is great, not elite yet. He can become elite, but he is great. Here's why I ask you this question. I'm going to get to the free agents here in a minute. Here's why I ask you. If Jalen Hurts is that elite, I'm letting half that team go on defense. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draft a guy at cornerback at 10. I'm going to take a edge rusher 
at maybe 30 or trade down. I might even take that 10th pick and trade down and get more picks, quality picks. It's a very deep draft when it comes to corners. I may trade down, get another first round pick. I may trade out of that 32nd or 31st pick. I may trade out of that now. I may go as young as the I may go as young as the Chiefs. The Chiefs have two corners on rookie deals. Who's in better shape? The Eagles or the Chiefs? Yale. I never thought I'd ever say this. Who's in better shape at corner? Kansas City or the Eagles? I think it's Kansas City. You're not paying but $3 million for two corners combined. And you want to pay $50 million. Or thirty million on two corners, you're not in very good shape. The Chiefs are in better shape than you, defensively. The kid from Purdue was kind of a factor, set the edge well. The only guy they're paying on that defense is Chris Jones. The only guy, and most of them are on. Do you know that at one time this year, Kansas City had nine rookies starting? Nine rookies. And how we had 16 one-year free agents. Kansas City's in better shape because of the quarterback and coach than the Eagles are. If they keep their coaching staff together, why wouldn't they be favorites next year to win the Super Bowl? Eagles aren't in very good shape defensively heading into the offseason. That de Eagle defense was exposed coaching and player-wise. Kaiser White played well against David Mills, Daniel Jones, and Josh Johnson. Not the name list you want to write home about. How he's going to resign Hardgrave? Let's look at this now. Man, you had it. I don't mean to be this guy to you guys, but you had it. Man. <sighs> You had it. Watch this. Let me do this before I get to the free agents. Eagle players that are on the official milk carton. If you've seen these players, please call 1-800-NOVICARE Center. Miles Sanders, Quez Watkins, Hassan Reddick, DTs, pick one. LBs, linebackers, pick one. Cornerbacks, pick one. Coaches, pick one. Pick one. Man. Could taste it. Just so well coached that football team. All right. 2023 free agents. March 12th starts the new calendar year for the NFL. Fletcher Cox, you're gone. $14 million, 32 million bucks. No, thank you. I have no room on my roster because I need a roster of production. You're out. Robert Quinn, you're, you're out. Brandon Graham. I want Brandon Graham back. 13.3, he's 35 years old. He had a really good year. This is what I'm doing with Brandon Graham. like to have him come back. I'll give him $5 million. Put incentives on it. He can come back. Okay. He can come back at five million, not thirteen three. Okay. Five million. And by the way, I want him back. I want him back. Javon Hardgrave, thirteen million. It's gonna cost you about fifteen million. I want him back. 
Kelsey, $9 million. I want him back. All pro year. I'd love to have this guy back. Okay, especially for Jalen. Bradbury, out. I'm not paying $15 million for that guy. It, and especially if you're going to play the same scheme. If you're going to play the same scheme, I'm not paying $15 million for a zone coverage corner. You make, you, we, we've made these corners sound like they're Darrell Rivas. They're not. If you're going to play a zone coverage, why would I pay 15, hey, as far as I'm concerned, Darius Slay and James Bradbury had the year off. They had the year off. Played no quarterbacks, played nobody of any significance whatsoever, and they played zone coverage the entire year. You know what that means? You know what they're telling you? Don't get beat deep. Hey, they can have all the passes underneath all they want. As long as they don't beat you deep, we're good. That's not an elite corner. That's not an elite corner. Sauce Gardner plays press coverage every freaking play. That's an elite lockdown guy. No, thank you. 16 million? Say a model's a tough one because I don't think he had a good Super Bowl. I think Chris Jones beat him up. But I think he had a great year. But that guy's going to command $13 million. I'm going to put a question mark by him because the Eagles aren't going to pay this. Watch. You're not going to pay $17 million for your left tackle, $15 million for your right tackle, $10 million for your center, and $14 million for your right guard. You're just not when you got to pay the quarterback. So because of economics, I'll do it now. Say Amalo's out. Can't afford him. This is where the salary for the quarterback starts to become an issue. Dillard, get this fat ass out of there. I'm sick of his bitching, too. I'm sick of him telling people what he can and can't do. I can't play this left guard spot. I can't play this right tackle spot. I can't. Dude, I'm sick of you. When all hands are on deck, I need you. I don't need you to tell me what you can do for me. You should be telling the team what you can do for them, especially as a backup. Dude, if you were a frontline starter, I get it. But you have been an underachieving fat turd in Philly. You have been a headache. You have been, in theory, a bust. been babying this conversation he's a bust and he's a pain in the ass shit i dude jack driscoll at least tries get him out of my locker room out i don't give a shit and he'll start somewhere you're a backup when Jeff Stoutland comes to you and says, hey, we need some help at left guard, I don't want to hear a debate. I don't want to have a conversation. All I want to hear is, coach, I'm here if you need me. Coach, I'm here. You need me, I'm here. Philly 500, big sills. This one hurts bad. This is worse than losing to the Bucks. the last game at the vet. Hurts was great. Gannon has to go. Philly 500, thank you. Let me tell you one more you popping in here, Jalen Hurts was spectacular. Jonathan Gannon was exposed. He was exposed. When Kansas City was running those crossing routes in the second half, Eagle guys were running into one another. This was varsity versus JV coaching. The entire Eagle coaching staff should have a come to Jesus conversation. Maybe you should go where Aaron Rodgers is in that dark room and sit there and do your penance because you got a lot to answer to. I mean, Jalen Hurts, the fumble. And by the way, I thought probably somebody 
thought I was going to kill him. The fumble sucked. It was a horrible play. Worst play in his NFL career. However, that was the best game he's played as an NFL player. Jalen Hurts was spectacular. There's not, you, you can't say any, the Quez Watkins drop was atrocious. It was an Alfron, Alshon Jeffries moment. Of all the passes I've seen in Eagle recent history that I've been kind of covering the team, the Alshon Jeffries in New Orleans and that thing in Glendale yesterday, two of the biggest drops in the history of the franchise. One would have put you in the NFC title game, and the other one maybe would have given you a Super Bowl. Quez deleted his Twitter. He should. That drop will haunt his career forever. And by the way, I don't give a shit if people like what I'm saying about them. They're nothing personal, kid. You blew out loud. I don't know you from a can of paint. I'm talking about how you looked on Sunday night. Kaiser White, $3 million. I'm keeping the guy. I don't think Nicobe Dean's a player yet. That guy hasn't shown me he can play. And by the way, I'm not in the prediction and I'm not in the business of fortune telling. So far, what I've seen in the Kobe Dean, I don't see it. And I'm not just going to take a whim that he just shows up and he turns into Derek Brooks. I don't believe it. And until he shows me he's got some ability, how do you move off of Kaiser White? He's three million bucks. I'm not going into the draft to get a rookie. The Kobe Dean hasn't shown me shit. You want to sit here and pretend that he's a good player when you haven't seen him all year? Hey. Yell goes how we may push him. Well, then guess what you'll do? You'll push your defense into trouble. Because next year on the schedule, you're playing some quarterbacks in the AFC. You're going to be playing guys who make Jonathan Gannon look like a school teacher. Hey, will somebody do me a favor? Hey, Tone, will you put some of the AFC teams up that the Eagles are playing against next year? Some of the teams with the elite quarterbacks on them. Guys that can throw it around the yard, please, if you can. You're not playing guys like David Mills and Kenny Pickett. You're going to be playing against guys that own you. Here we go. You may be playing against Aaron Rodgers with the Jets. Patriots, Mac Jones, you'll probably be okay there. Dak has done a really great job on you. There's Daniel Jones. Arizona, Kyler Murray. I don't know. You better hope it's early. 49ers, you're going to get a healthy quarterback with a great... You're playing Josh Allen. You're playing Geno Smith. You're playing Patrick Mahomes. Who knows who's going to be in Tampa? So you got Tua also. Whatever you guys think of Josh Allen... I think less of Jonathan Gannon. Well, Josh Allen's a turnover machine. Your coach is a fraud. Your coordinator's a fraud. Josh Allen turns the ball over. Still won 14 games. Still won 14 games. Should we hope Gannon gets hired elsewhere? Well, he ain't leaving. He's not getting a job after that performance. Does anybody actually think Jonathan Gannon is going to get a job after what just happened? Does – you better – hey, 
Would a shockey of Indianapolis hired him? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Arizona's pretty stupid. It is the Bidwells. Good point, Chris. Okay. The real. You're you're probably right. I mean, it is the bid. I mean, look, the Bidwells and the Ursays. I'm not, I, I'm I'm probably not thinking there's really a smart dude in the room between the two. So probably. <laughs> You remember what I told you a couple weeks ago when I was telling you guys, you think any heat's on Nick Sirianni? You guys said no. How do you think how he feels about Nick Sirianni right now? How do you think how he feels about Nick Sirianni? Remember I told you, do you think there's any heat on Nick Sirianni? For this Super Bowl. Oh, no way. Conrad Dobler died. Man, I got a really great card up here from him. I got to find that. I got to find that card from Conrad. Oh, don't tell me Conrad died. Man, Conrad Dobler died. Uh, he's really a great dude. I got a great card up there somewhere from him. Ugh. Cardiac cards. Hey, guys, how, how, how do you think how he feels about Nick Sirianni right now? How do you think he feels about him? Obnoxious guinea. ATLT. <laughs> Very Philly-ish, but, okay, you know... <laughs> Yeah, an obnoxious guy. <laughs> an obnoxious guinea. I think I've had people say that to me before. <laughs> hey, I think I, I think I've had I think I've had people say it. I'd love Lovey Smith in the building, but they can't have anybody like Lovey in there. But Lovey's mild mannered, man. I'd love to have him. Press coverage, foreign concept again. And dude, you don't have the best corners when you play zone coverage. Oh. Oh, man. Let me finish up the free agency and we'll go from there, okay? Let's do this. I've got to take a time out here. Let's hit the like button. I'll finish this up. Where do you go from here? What do you take from this game? If you're the players and the coaching staff heading into the offseason here, we'll do that next. Hit the like button. Keep it here on the National Football Show. When it comes to the fight against insurance companies, large corporations, and the healthcare industry, injured victims are always the underdog. But that doesn't worry us. At Messon Associates, we're an injury law firm from Philadelphia, and we come to fight. Our clients know that they've got representation with a chip on its shoulder. And it's the same chip that makes Philly the toughest city in the country. Call 215-568-3500 or visit us online at messalaw.com. Messa & Associates, the toughest injury firm in Philadelphia. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at Drytech. 
At DryTech, we offer three major services, the first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. My name is uh, Fran Salerno. I'm a managing director here at Del Vale Insurance Group. Been in the business for over 36 years, saving people money on their insurance needs. Give us a call. Let us help you custom design an insurance plan that meets both your needs and budget. Did you know taxes could be your biggest expense during retirement? Are most of your assets in tax-deferred accounts like IRAs and 401ks? Taxes are historically low today, but we're facing significant headwinds in the future. Do you have a plan? The Thrive Financial Team has more than 100 years of experience helping people across the Delaware Valley with forward-looking tax planning. Learn how to shift your money from forever tax to no or low tax accounts. Get your Thrive Retirement Tax Playbook today. Go for the beers, go for the cheers, go for the hit and the hits, go for the scene, go for the screens, go for the gallery, go for the win, go to ocean. Sales National Football Show. Appreciate you guys coming aboard. Thank you very much. Even the ones that are my biggest critics, I feel for you guys today. Man. Whew. See, in a city like Philly, Kansas City, Chicago, Boston, Tampa, Denver, San Francisco, Pittsburgh, Seattle. It matters. You know why? Because a team like the Eagles is civic pride. Places like New York and California. Civic pride is a jello stand. Okay? Some sort of do-gooder program. That's what's in those states. Okay? A team like the Eagles is civic pride. It's civic pride. It's why it matters. Dude, I know people that are fans in that Philadelphia city who live and breathe by that team who, like, if you really start talking stupid, you get into a fistfight over that shit. Some of the greatest people I know, too, like, lose their minds over this. Okay? It's, it's, it's like generationally, like, like Tone and Xander, their parents were Eagle fans. Xander, oh, an Eagle fan. His dad, his dad, his dad's dad. Goes down the line like that with some of these teams. Okay? Drew goes, I had a guy tell me that the Eagles are a religion. Many places they are. You have to have the same blind faith every year. Tone goes like this. Dude, my dad's hurting. Those are great, unbelievable fans. By the way, I'm going to say this to you. One of the coolest things I've seen all year, I saw Nick Seriani crying for the national anthem. I was like this. This guy loves America. He loves Philly. He loves the team. He loves what he's doing. He loves his family. How could you not cry for a moment like that? I'll give you guys 
For his birthday, I got him a signed Seth Joyner jersey. He's a lifer. Dude, I loved I loved Sirianni crying right there when they were doing the national anthem. And I'm going to say this to you guys. Can I tell you the greatest moment in my life? My Italian grandparents, my aunt, my Uncle Richard, and some other significant people that raised me. There I was on Tampa Stadium with the flyover and an NFL helmet under my arm. And Aunt Betty, I'm sorry. I know I said it twice today, but for the third time, my aunt's in the stands. I got pictures of it. I went like this. What the fuck am I doing here? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, America. Those Jets are flying over, playing the Bears, Walter Payton's final game. And I'm, I'm, it's emotional, man. You're watching those things fly out. You're like, what am I doing here? Nothing like it. You're so grateful to be in this country. It's great. So when you lose something like that, a piece of you gets lost. I felt it last night. I'm like, as soon as the minutes and the seconds started ticking off, man, then they got the ball one last time, and I'm sitting there going like this, man. Dude, it was a great run this year for this team. They had a great run. On the field with Walter Payton, I got a great picture of it, Yale. His final game in 87 at Tampa Stadium. I played in that game. Playing against Walter. Let's recap here. The kind of team you're going to bring back. Then we're going to reset at the top of the hour. A couple more things. And again, the changes I would make for the upcoming season. Because again, there's only so much you can bang on here. Right? I said Fletcher Cox is out. Robert Quinn, gone. Brandon Graham, I'll give you $5 million if you want to come back. I'd love to have you back. Hardgrave, I'll pay you the $15 million. Kelsey, I'll pay you the ten. million. Bradbury, out. I am not paying $15 million a year for a zone cover corner. You're defeating the purpose. You're overpaying for a guy who's not elite. How can you tell if he's elite? He didn't have to be elite this year. They were empty calories. He didn't have to be elite. He never played anyone elite until he got into the Super Bowl. Bradbury's not elite. He's who the Giants thought he was. Having a better year. Say Amalo, I can't afford him. Dillard, get out. Kaiser White, three million. I don't believe Nicobe Dean's ready to play. I'll bring him back. TJ Edwards is not going to make twenty million dollars. He's making two two. Here's five million. You don't want it? I'll draft a backer. I don't really need you. I want you. I'd make that clear to him. You struggled all year covering tight ends. Boston Scott, 1.3. And he's 25. Sure. He fits what we're doing. Steve-O says it's a process. All the great teams go through it. GQ says Marino never made it back. You know why? He never had a run game. Miles Sanders. Dude. You, do, do you guys remember when Barrett Robbins was like an MIA for the Raiders? At least we knew who he was. He was in Tijuana. At least he was in Tijuana. And he missed the Super Bowl against the Bucs. At least we knew where he was. This guy, 
was on the field and he was a no-show. Miles Sanders, man. And someone goes, you think his injury played a factor? Hasn't an injury played a factor his entire career in Philly? Hasn't it? Hasn't an injury played a factor in this guy's career? His entire career. I'm sick of excuses with this guy. And when I needed him the most, he was a no-show. Every year it's something with that guy. And whatever happened to his pass-catching ability, his skills, has disintegrated. The Eagles have no screen game. It's like they don't even try it. C.J. Gardner, this this is going to be an interesting one. He makes $826,000 and he's 25. I think he's a priority. I think he's a priority. But the number is going to be $12 million. He's going to make he, – dude, this guy here is going to be one of the biggest jumps in salaries of any player in the offseason. He's going to go from less than $900,000 to $12 million annually. You got you, you got to ask yourself. See what I like about CJ is his versatility. I could put him in a slot corner and play him at safety, and I could also potentially play him at corner. I mean, that's a lot of versatility. I'd pay this guy. Marcus Epps, six hundred seventy-two k. I think Marcus had an okay year. He had a terrible Super Bowl. Then again, that whole defense played like shit in the Super Bowl. Whew. What do you do? How he's going to have a whole new looking team on defense, especially. Now, because these guys played poorly in the Super Bowl, that might make him want to come back. Because now how he's got a negotiating tool, he could turn around and go like this. Dog, when we needed you the most, you were terrible. I would tell Miles Sanders, here's four million bucks. My, Miles Sanders is not going to take that. He'll go in the open market. And you know what he's going to be? Le'Veon Bell with the Jets. You watch. You ain't got that old line in front of you. Does anybody actually think Miles Sanders is going to put up 1,300 yards? In Chicago? Arizona? Right? You can't think Carolina? Overpaying for miles. Miles Sanders is a benefactor of being in that huddle with Jalen. Watch this. I used to think Jalen was the benefactor of being in that huddle with the O-line, which he is, but on a stage like he played last night, Jalen Hurts made himself money last night. Jalen didn't earn a ring last night, but you know what he did earn? Respect and money. Jalen Hurts, watch this. I'm going to give you guys this. Imagine a star running back with our offensive line. You put Derrick Henry back there. Derrick Henry had 2,500 yards. Do you know what? Here's the guys. Watch this. A.J. Brown. Was he worth the investment? Absolutely. Is Devontae Smith worth the first-round pick? No doubt. Is Dallas Goddard worth the the extension he got last year, absolutely. Is Jalen Hurts worth the money he's going to make with the Eagles? Last night, Jalen Hurts increased his market value last night. So to answer it, yes. Bradbury, as far as I'm concerned, he took a hit money-wise. 
Slay, question whether you want to bring him back. That's an $18 million guy. The two guys you got at the milk stand. You don't have to come back if you don't want. Matter of fact, paying Sue and Joseph $3 million apiece? No, thank you. I'll take the $6 million and spread it out somewhere else. Hey, TJ, you want to come back? Here's the number. You're not dictating to us. You're not in that position. You shit the bed. Marcus, here's the number. Because all people are going to do, they're going to put the game film on and they're going to look at an elite quarterback. They're not going to put on the Giants in the Brock Purdy game or the jo Josh Johnson game. They're going to put on the Patrick Mahomes game to see how you played against an elite guy in an elite game in an elite moment. And they're going to see how you performed. Hertz made himself money. Miles Sanders cost him money. Isaac Sayamalo cost him money. Chris Jones killed him. There were guys last night that increased their market value, and there were guys that cost themselves money. Coaching staff. I got more questions about the coaching staff than I do the roster. We're going to reset. Hour number three. I'm going to tell you, listen, we've, we've kind of covered it. What's next? Where do you go from here? By the way, guys, I know you're, you're feeling it like Tone's dad. But hey, you know what champions do? They pick themselves off the ground. They take adverse. The only way the Eagles are going to learn to be a champion is through adversity. Don't you remember the most significant thing in the history of Patrick Mahomes' career? What was it? Brady going into Arrowhead and beating him. That guy's not looked back versus Brady since. At a Super Bowl, I got it. Correct. But he's been the elite quarterback the last five years. They all learn from that. Hour three, hit the like button. Keep it here on the National Football Show. When it comes to the fight against insurance companies, large corporations, and the healthcare industry, injured victims are always the underdog. But that doesn't worry us. At Messon Associates, we're an injury law firm from Philadelphia, and we come to fight. Our clients know that they've got representation with a chip on its shoulder. And it's the same chip that makes Philly the toughest city in the country. Call 215-568-3500 or visit us online at messalaw.com. Messa & Associates, the toughest injury firm in Philadelphia. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online.
My name is uh, Fran Salerno. I'm a managing director here at Dell Vale Insurance Group. Been in the business for over 36 years, saving people money on their insurance needs. Give us a call. Let us help you custom design an insurance plan that meets both your needs and budget. Did you know taxes could be your biggest expense during retirement? Are most of your assets in tax-deferred accounts like IRAs and 401ks? Taxes are historically low today, but we're facing significant headwinds in the future. Do you have a plan? The Thrive Financial Team has more than 100 years of experience helping people across the Delaware Valley with forward-looking tax planning. Learn how to shift your money from forever tax to no or low tax accounts. Get your Thrive Retirement Tax Playbook today. Go for the beers, go for the cheers, go for the hit and the hits, go for the scene, go for the screens, go for the gallery, go for the win, go to ocean. National Football Show, hour number two. Hey, by the way, I believe the 49ers are going to be a fantastic football team next year, too. They're going to have they're, – they're in better shape than the Eagles. Okay. Bose is getting an extension. Samuel's under contract. McCaffrey's under contract. Williams is under contract. Warner's under contract. Their secondary is under contract. They got to figure out the quarterback thing. That, that, <clears throat> by the way, that is huge. Okay, that is huge. Because the last seven years, Kyle Shanahan has had the worst luck at quarterback than any coach in the league. Okay? 49ers have a great roster coming back. The Eagles don't. The Eagles do not have a great roster coming back as of February 13th. You don't know who's coming back yet because you got to figure out the quarterback thing. You have no idea. You have no idea what you have coming back on that roster. Zero. The Niners have all their stars coming back. Kittle's back. And their defense is back. By the way, I'll say this to you. Kansas City's front four, I underestimated them. They were better than I thought. Because they stuffed the Eagle O-line. They stuffed them. They stuffed the Eagles O-line. Okay? They stuffed them. All Eagles go like this. Yes, we do. The entire offense is locked up. But Sanders, your right guard's not. Your running back's not. And your center may retire. I wouldn't say locked up. Your defense has nothing locked up. Sweat, Reddick, and who? Jordan Davis? Your entire defense is not locked up. So when you say that, you have half a football team locked up. Not true. They have both sides of the ball with their stars locked up. Maniac goes, drop some defense. We got a good draft picks. So here we go again. Howie, the drafter, no, thank you. Howie the drafter? Really? He can't draft a corner to save his freaking life. He can't draft a safety to save his life. He's got one wide receiver in 20 years, right? What? He doesn't draft linebackers. TJ Edwards was a free agent. What are you talking about? The drafting guru of Howie Roseman. Really? 
Where do you see that? Howie Roseman, Hurts may be his greatest draft choice. The rest of them, I wouldn't say Jordan Davis is a bust yet. That's not fair. And I never said that. He just has to pick his ass up and pick his game up more. Big Seals can't outplay him. My rookie year is better than him. I can't be better than the 13th pick. Jonathan goes, Dan, dual threat quarterbacks don't win anything. He didn't win anything. He was beaten. Don't change the yardsticks. He didn't win. You don't get credit for playing well in a loss. Since when does that loser? Man, that is the biggest, stupidest shit that I hear people talking about all the time now. It's got to be because of the politics and what people watch on TV now. That people move the yardsticks. When I was raised... If you lost a game, no matter how great you played, you still took the L. Where does that mentality come from? Is that like today's people? Hey, you know, we lost a game, but I played great. I'm sorry, I'm foreign. That's foreign to me. That's really foreign to me. That's so foreign to me. Well, hey, I played great. And and by the way, I said it. Jalen was spectacular in the game. He still hung an L on him. Still, they got an L on him. Everyone wins. Like Hollywood Hogan said, everyone wins. Here's a medal. <laughs> it was stupid. Hey, I, I'm, 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 maybe I should be because in my in my loss in my championship game, I played my greatest game too. But everyone always reminds me we we lost to Penn State. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Led the team in tackles. I had a sack. The open. He lost sales. Shit. Can never get around the L. People try to get around the L. He lost. He tried to. They do everything in their power nowadays. To try to get around the L. It's like you dress up the L. You lost. You lost. Look at Maniac. Look at him dress it up here. Second year quarterback. Made the playoffs. First season. Made the Super Bowl second season. Look at him dressing it up. All L's. All L's. I'm in on offense sales. Oh, okay, on offense. Okay. I'm not dressing anything up. So hang on here now. So let's see. So Daniel Jones. Hey, man, he really had a great turnaround year, like Jalen did a year ago. Looks really good. Let's give him $35 million. <laughs> If I were the Eagles, man, I'd be hoping that the Giants give that guy $35 million a year because he's a bum. Daniel Jones is a bum. The Eagle defense has played bums all year. Let me dress your defense down. Everything I said about your defense is fact. They were overrated. The Philadelphia defense is overrated, overhyped, and undercoached. Am I wrong? Tone, am I wrong? Overrated, overhyped, and undercoached. I saw a lesser roster beat your ass last night. Down 10. Seriously. The only reason that the Chiefs aren't still scoring? Because the clock ran out. (laughs) Because the clock ran out. And shit, the running back would have scored. 
and the, the running back would have scored, but they wanted to eat the clock. Turnovers? No, 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 no. Turnover. There was only one in the game. But we have the stats. You sure did. You win a stat game. You don't win the game. And when you needed your special teams, how he failed you. How he failed you so much in that game yesterday. The coaches he put on the sidelines in his special teams. Yeah, because how he bought into who he was too. He bought into his ego. I gotcha. How you like me now? I gotcha. <laughs> okay. Lesser roster whipped your ass last night. Better coaching was on display. Dude, it was it, it was like the, you, you know what it was like? It, it was like watching like Napoleon's Republican Guard versus like the English Army and him just destroying the English Army with 200 soldiers. Okay, or it's like watching 300. Okay, when they beat the Persians with like 15 guys. <laughs> That's what it was like watching. Holy cow, man. <laughs> and you guys bought into that shit all year long because you know why the media in Philly kept telling you this defense is the best. I kept telling you the whole year. it ain't They're not who they are because this list of quarterbacks that I wrote down again, they were never challenged. And I told you on Friday, this is either going to vindicate or validate what I said about your Eagle defense. And it actually vindicated what I said. They sucked all year because they didn't have to do anything great. We got the best corner sills in the NFL. No, you don't. You never did. You never had the best corners because the best corners don't play zone coverage. And everyone wants to pay them $15 million. You want to pay zone coverage corners $15 million a piece. Where would you do that? You could get rookies to do that. Wait a minute. That's exactly what the Chiefs did. They lined up two rookie corners and went out and said, well, we could beat you anyway. We don't have to do what the Eagles were planning on trying to do this coming offseason. Spend $35 million on two guys who are playing zone coverage. I kept Everyone kept telling me, Sills, we got the best hand. I'm like, how can you say that when you don't play press coverage ever? Better comparison, the Eagles coaching staff looks like a bunch of college kids at the L House playing fantasy football on their boards. Joey B, thank you, brother. I never bought into the defense because they couldn't put teams away. Great observation, Steven. Great observation. And the RPO system could never put teams away. That's why teams crawled back into games against the Eagles. Okay? I think you need a red zone back. I think you need a LeGarrette Blunt. Somebody, hey, I, a guy like LeGarrette Blunt, instead of having Jalen do it all, a die and Blunt would have been remarkable on this team. Those guys would have ran the Chiefs over in the red zone. And it would have been dominant. They need a red zone back. Somebody in that red zone. Who was that dude that used to play up in uh, New York with the Giants? What's his name? Jacobs? You guys remember that guy, Jacobs? That big kid from Auburn. I'd love to have a guy like that running the ball for the Eagles in the red zone. Put his ass back there. You want Jalen to run in between the 20s? That's all good in open space. But they need they, they need red zone backs. Man, Miles Sanders, man, what a disappointment. He, I mean, seriously, what an absolute disappointment. Um, the takeaways. I'm going to get to my sheet again because I want to reset. 
I liked the Super Bowl. I enjoyed it. Okay, I enjoyed it. Um, the coaching staff, once again, completely cost this football team the opportunity to win. Tone says, why won't the Eagles add a power back to their running back rotation? Wouldn't it be having a solid job in Hayman? Right, it would be the knockout punch. The Eagles don't have a knockout punch on that team. Sanders is soft. And Jalen's the only tough running back you have. Do you know Jalen Hurts is the only bona fide, steady running back that the Eagles have? You're asking him to do way too much. You don't even ask Patrick Mahomes to do that. You know what Mahomes does? Mahomes takes off in a timely fashion. Everything Mahomes did in that game was with the most efficiency. He was the most efficient quarterback of the two. He only had 53 plays. He had to be. The Eagles had 20 more plays, which means three more series than Kansas City. They were more efficient, especially in the second half. His only incomplete pass was the throwaway. It was a throwaway. Second half, it was a complete shit show coaching-wise for the Philly. Complete shit show. There was nothing that worked except the quarterback. He was the only thing keeping you from a blowout in the second half. Jalen Hurts kept that score down. God forbid you had two more turnovers. They had to put 60 on you. If you had turnovers in that game, he might have put 60 points on you. Jalen kept you in that thing. <laughs> Special teams was never addressed. And get this, the Eagles made two critical mistakes. That big punt return that brought it down inside the 10, and Jalen's fumble. There's your ball game. And the inability to coach and adjust in the second half. You couldn't adjust. Here, we should have known this, though, after the New Orleans game. When they handed Gardner Minshew Jalen Hurts' playbook that they couldn't adjust. They're not good coaches. They're great organizers. And they don't have to have trust in a player. You know why? Because it's the front office that decides all moves on that staff. Nick Sirianni didn't hand over the play calling. It was taken from him. Do we not agree now? You think Nick just up and gave it to him? If you do, you're an idiot. It was taken from them when they were two and five. It was taken. Howie took the play calling from them. You need to be a head coach. Hire Seth. They'd never listen to him. They'd be afraid of him. They'd be afraid of him. Vic Fangio got $162,000 for two weeks worth of consulting the Eagles for the Super Bowl. <laughs> he might have threw that money in a trash can because it, all it did was confuse him. Let me show you something here about how this right here. See, Joey? Hey, um, Tone, put Joey B's up. Put Joey B's put Joey B's up here with the hundred sixty two thousand um, that uh, the Eagles put. see that right there with Joey B just did. This shows you the organization at its finest. So inside the coaching staff, Joey B's right. Watch this. You got Jonathan Gannon. You got Vic. You've got Tracy Rocker. You've got Howie Roseman. 
you've got all these consultants giving an opinion. You got all these guys telling you how to run your team with no clear decision maker. That's what you got in Dallas. You got a lot of opinions, but no resolve. You know why Andy Reid wins? It's his show. It's his show. And the general managers are there to work for him. Not vice versa. See, Sirianni works for Howie. Most places that have success, like Pittsburgh, how many times did Kevin Colbert come on this place and go, Kevin Colbert goes like this. You never see Kevin Colbert during the regular season when he was the general manager of the place. Why? Because it was Mike Tomlin's show. Off season, that's when he puts the team together and helps put the team together for Mike. And they've done that from Neil Donahue to uh, Kevin Colbert. There's only been three general managers from 1969 and three head football coaches. There's a reason Pittsburgh wins, even with lesser talent, because there's one decision maker. In Philly, you have eight guys in a room deciding what the game plan is. That means you have no game plan. You got a bunch of people talking and talking heads telling you, well, we should do this. We should do that. Hey, this is what they like to do. Shit, in Kansas City, Andy goes, we're doing this. And everyone puts a game plan around it. Too many, you got you, you got you got too many people in with too many decisions, and that's an organizational disaster. How he put the wrong coaching staff on the sideline, didn't address free agency, and believed in his hype. And now he's got to rebuild the team. Oh, that's probably right up his alley, though. How many people believe Howie Long's going to draft, or Howie Long? How many people believe that Howie's going to put a good draft together? He didn't last year. <laughs> what guy was worth the shit that he drafted? The backup tight end? Kind of. Well, you think last year's draft was good? I don't know. I can't tell. Kobe Dean's never gotten on the field. Jordan Davis, after his injury, was like in hibernation, and the rest of that th stuff was non-factor. But he's a great talent evaluator. No, he's not. He's a great deal maker. He's a great deal maker. He is that. I give you that. But that's what he does. Because he's, you know where he comes from? He's a capologist. He doesn't come from personnel. How he doesn't come from personnel, guys, Joe Banner did. Joe Banner came from personnel. Joe Douglas came from personnel. Andrew Barry came from personnel. How he came from a bank. He came from a bank. Fangio's Miami contract, $4.5 million a year. Like I said, Joey B., you don't have to be a very good coach nowadays to rob to, to rob an organization for money. You just don't. <laughs> you don't have to be very good. And okay, whatever, dude. Yeah. Howie Roseman worked in human resources. And then when Chip was in there. He was in the custodial section of the NovaCare Center. <laughs> and he said this, man, when he came out of the custodial branch at NovaCare, I am going to put people in a position that are all yes men to me. And I'm never going to have anybody stabbing me in the back ever again. Like when I got pushed to the custodial duties and they gave me a mop, I will never in a, hum in a, in a million years be put into that closet again. And guess what? The owner gave him the contract extension to prove it. He chose wrong. Doug Peterson is on that sideline Sunday night. The Eagles win the Super Bowl. The owner chose wrong. Doug would have run the place like Andy runs Kansas City.
would have ran to place like Kansas City and Jacksonville. His first year, Doug Peterson wins a division playoff game and turns his quarterback into a pro bowler. Nick Sirianni and his staff gets exposed by a better coach. And Doug doesn't answer to anybody. You think he's answering to Trent Balky? <laughs> Trent Balky gets Doug Peterson coffee in the morning and a donut. The one guy that Andy brings, what's his name, Veach? The kid he brought from Philly works for Andy. Veach was the guy that was down in Lubbock going like this. Got to watch his game film on this guy. You got to watch his game film on this guy. You got to watch his game film. You got to watch this guy. It was Patrick Mahomes. Andy Reid didn't know who Patrick Mahomes was. They went from like 26 up to 10 to get him. Got to get this guy. I'm telling you. And they were winning ball games with Alex Smith. Veach and Reed had to go to Clark Hunt and go like this. This kid in Lubbock's good. Went and grabbed him. Sills, that's where it's a problem. I don't think it was Nick, man. I don't. Oh, I think there's too many voices in the building. It's a problem in Dallas. you got the owner constantly meddling in game day decisions. And you see Howie out there in front of the team locker, Coach Roseman. Coach Roseman, man, he's out there in front patting people on the back. Where was he for that thing? Those were all his guys, coaching staff, players. Whew, man, that was a bad look for him. Some would go, well, he got to the Super Bowl. Yeah, he got to the Super Bowl by default. <laughs> if defense gets one stop, just one, the Eagles win it. <laughs> Dude, they couldn't. They couldn't, O'Tone. They couldn't get the stop. They were confused. No game is by default. Well, when you got Christian McCaffrey as your quarterback, that's the fault. And when you had to play against an elite quarterback, like I've been telling you, he was killed. And, and, and you know what really is really the most disturbing thing about the Super Bowl yesterday? Hey, Tone, they beat you with the 2021 game plan because they knew you wouldn't do anything different because you're not capable of it. They beat you with the same game plan, but they beat you without Tyree Kill. Two thousand twenty-one game, Eagles outrush, or the Chiefs outrush the Eagles. Super Bowl, the Chiefs outrush the Eagles. How's that possible? The Chiefs aren't a running team. They don't have a running back with a thousand yards. They beat him with Ferdy Pacheco, Ali's doctor in the corner. <laughs> He's a pretty good ball player. So in 2021, they outrush you. Super Bowl 158 to 115. 70 of the 115 was Hurts. Passing. You guys threw the ball more. In 2021, the Mahomes, Mahomes only threw the ball for 271. And in the Super Bowl, he went for 182. He went for three. Jalen Hurts has thrown for two games with 300 yards against the Chiefs. And they lose. <laughs> Here is the key, though, and why I say efficiency. Look at this. You held the Chiefs in 2021 to 63 plays. In the Super Bowl, you held them to less than that number. 
to 53. 10 less plays. And you had 72. Their efficiency against your team, this is why they averaged seven yards a play. They averaged seven yards a play against you. They didn't have to put up huge numbers. You couldn't stop them. And they beat you with the same plan, but without Hill. They took their 2021 game plan and beat you with it. And you made no adjustments in two games. That's coaching. That's incompetent. Eighty-five goes Sills. What's your game plan for next year? I like that. Got to get CJ signed. Here, eighty-five. Now that I see how Kansas City wins, hey, but here's the problem. Your coaches aren't good enough. You're going to have lesser players because I'm going to take um, players off your team here. And that means Jalen's going to have to do more, which means dual threat is going to be more in a position to be injured. So you've got to compensate for this. I'm going to keep one of the linebackers, probably TJ. The other one's out the door. And Nicobe Dean, better play or I'm cutting him. He better prove to me in training camp he can play or he's he's not on my wish list for the future. I'm keeping Hardgrave. And the big guy better play next to him. He has to start because he's on a rookie contract. Because we're going to build this team like Kansas City's building it since you guys say that Jalen Hurts is elite like Patrick Mahomes. Okay. All those DTs are gone. I'm going to have uh, Jordan Davis on a rookie contract making a million bucks. Thank you. And the only other guy that's going to make money in the building is going to be my other tackle, which is Hardgrave. I'm going to have Josh Sweat, and I'm going to have Hassan Reddick. Pretty good front four. My linebackers have to be TJ, and they have to be Kaiser White. My secondary, CJ's coming back. I don't know where I'm going to put him. Slot, corner, safety, but he's coming back. I am probably going to bring back Darius Slay to my chagrin. Because I don't want dead cap money on my deal. I'm drafting in the second round a safety, getting rid of Epps, and I'm drafting a quarter corner at number 10. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get younger and cheaper because I gotta pay the quarterback. I'm gonna draft in the second or third round a guard. Jeff Stoutland's gonna help. I gotta figure out what we're doing at center. Looks like we got the replacement. If he's out, Kelsey, you're saving 10 million bucks there. You look pretty good. Then you can address the quarterback. And quite frankly, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to offer him a three-year fully guaranteed contract of $45 million. If he doesn't take it, you're going into the next year on your rookie deal. And get this, if you do it again, I'm going to overpay you. And that's what I'll do. I'll give him 50. You earned yourself an extra. And you do it. If not, I'm not going to tear my team apart, then tear it apart more and give Jalen lesser talent all in the same, I'm not doing, I'm not paying Hurts and putting a lesser talented team on the field. What are the other? Pick one. You can't have both. Nobody in the NFL can have both. Kansas City had nine rookies starting at one time this year. You got two corners that were rookies, you got an end that's a rookie. It can be done. And quite frankly, if you believe that much in Hurts, it has to be done. Miles Sanders, out. Okay? Sanders is out. I might need some depth also at tight end, fourth or fifth round. And I'm getting rid of Minshew. I don't want that shit on me. I need somebody that can, if Hurts gets hurt, that I have somebody like Tyler Huntley behind him. That there won't be that change in direction like we saw this last year where in New Orleans, you, you, you give him Jalen Hurts' game plan. That's a fundamental flaw that was glaring.
Jordan Davis is on pace. Oof. To be the new Broderick uh, Buckley. I sure hope not. Niners go like this. The Eagles have been relevant for 57 years. Well, the last 20 in the NFC East combined, they have more playoff wins, more Super Bowl appearances than any team in that division. Giants have more Super Bowls in the last 20 years. I'll give you. But the Giants have not been relevant in a decade. Hertz is not taking less money. Eric, you're missing it. He gave you the hometown discount this year. He gave you the hometown discount. He's making $1.3 million. You're not going to get another one. You got the hometown discount this year. Okay? Why? Why? That's insulting to go to him and go, hey, take less money. He's already done that. He's already done that. Hey, Jalen, you make $1.3 million this year. Can you do me a favor and take a $10 million haircut next year? Man, what are you, crazy? Come on, man. Dude, if you if you give Hertz a two-year, offer him two years, you better offer him $100 million, fully guaranteed. Remember, if you want less years, it's got to be more base and fully guaranteed. Because most quarterbacks get five-year deals and there's signing bonuses in there. But if you go less in years, better give them a full guaranteed contract. Oh, by the way, let me know when the Eagles raise ticket prices. You see what those scumbags in Denver did? They gave the fans the worst product on the planet and raised ticket prices 10%. Do you think they're paying for Sean Payton and Russell Wilson? How about that? Show you what the NFL is, man. They don't care. Take a shit on their fans any chance they get. Oh, you love us. Bronco country. It's freaking great. Yeah. Well, you think Jeffrey Lurie's paying for Jalen Hurts' contract extension? Eagle fans will. (laughs) What do you think? Oh, come on now. You know better than that. Broncos raised ticket prices 10%. Gave them the shittiest product in the history of the franchise and raised your ticket prices 10%. <laughs> God. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go out. We're going to get the best coach. We got, we're going to turn this thing around with Russell Wilson. Oh, yeah. You're going to pay 10% more. What? <laughs> Pay an extra thousand bucks on your tickets. Hey, you got a ten thousand dollar ticket package, man. You're paying an extra grand on it. Good night. <laughs> oh, has there ever been a high profile quarterback in their prime that has taken less years and more money up front, like we are suggesting Hurts do? Honest question. I don't know where that started too, Tone. Where why would Hertz take less money? Why only why would you say that? You think they're say, well, they are you know the owner actually was begging for it for Joe Burrow. You think Joe Burrow is gonna take less money in Cincinnati? We dude. Hey Joe, why don't you take less money? Yo, Sills, who replaces Gannon? They'll elevate somebody from within. Oh, Howie will sign somebody. All right, let me take a timeout. Please hit the like button. Keep it here on the National Football Show. When it comes to the fight against insurance companies, large corporations, and the healthcare industry, injured victims are always the underdog. But that doesn't worry us. 
At Messon Associates, we're an injury law firm from Philadelphia, and we come to fight. Our clients know that they've got representation with a chip on its shoulder, and it's the same chip that makes Philly the toughest city in the country. Call 215-568-3500 or visit us online at messalaw.com. Messon Associates, the toughest injury firm in Philadelphia. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you're having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. My name is uh, Fran Salerno. I'm a managing director here at Dell Vale Insurance Group. Been in the business for over 36 years, saving people money on their insurance needs. Give us a call. Let us help you custom design an insurance plan that meets both your needs and budget. Did you know taxes could be your biggest expense during retirement? Are most of your assets in tax-deferred accounts like IRAs and 401ks? Taxes are historically low today, but we're facing significant headwinds in the future. Do you have a plan? The Thrive Financial Team has more than 100 years of experience helping people across the Delaware Valley with forward-looking tax planning. Learn how to shift your money from forever tax to no or low tax accounts. Get your Thrive Retirement Tax Playbook today. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. National football show. I'll tell you this to you guys. If I were Howie Roseman, next week I would go to the table and go to Clutch and goes, here's $45 million annually for the next three years. See if they bite on it. Because the entire roster is dictated on what you pay him. And you get that out of the way. You feel me? Because he would make 1.4 this year. Because that would be an extension. Okay? Don't let Joe Burrow and Lamar Jackson set the market. You want to beat that. You want to beat Cincinnati. Cincinnati's got to start negotiating. Because here's the number. I say Cincinnati's going to have to pay Joe Burrow $55 million a year. Lamar has already been offered 51-3. Okay? And the Eagles, they're going to they're, they're, they're gonna have to come to the table. Why would you let Cincinnati and Baltimore set the market price? 
See, to me, you watch you watch both Baltimore and Cincinnati start negotiating maybe as quick as the early part of next week. Shit, maybe at the end of this week, you could start hearing some murmurs about contracts going back and forth. You don't, your entire roster set up on what you're going to do with Hertz. And you're going to have to have a lesser team. Well, not this year, next year. And it would make it easier for Howie. Look, the cap's only going up $16 million. Well, if you say it goes up another $16, $18 million next year, that's $32 million over two years. You're kind of making that money up. You're kind of making that dough up. Yeah. Jalen Hurts is priority number one because the rest of the dominoes fall in what he does. It's kind of an uncomfortable situation, too. How he got to the Super Bowl with moves that he made with free agency and with um, trades. Slay was a trade a couple of years back. Um, A.J. Brown, free agents. Really, the draft had no impact at all, especially defensively. Isn't that something? Howie, the last two years, his draft and his free agency had no impact really when it comes to keeping a team together. One thing Howie can't do is keep a team together. Yeah, I said defensively. Howie can't keep a team together. It's been a, it's been a mantra his since seventeen. You know what I would do, man. Some of the people that are hey, the Niner guys, the Niners are going to be good. They're going to be in the conversation. Eagles went further, man. Why do you, why do you sure up in the draft? O or D defense? They need defense. They need defensive help. Your secondary is depleted, completely gone. And it's too expensive for guys that don't do what you need them to do. See, the perfect thing this year was Jonathan Gannon and his system playing against shit quarterbacks and shit teams and shit offenses was perfect for these guys. The best corners in the NFL, that was never true. They were never the best corners. You know why? They didn't have to be. That's why Gardner Johnson led the NFL in interceptions. Guy playing safety. He was just playing center field for Jonathan Gannon. Theoretically, think about it. Mike Trout was the MVP, a center fielder, on defense this year. All he had to do was play center field. He never challenged anybody. Didn't have to because Gannon's system doesn't challenge anybody. And when he does get challenged, he gets destroyed. Exactly what I've been telling you for two years. And yet, you are so close to winning this thing. This is going to be a tough pill to swallow for a while. You know that 0-4 loss to the Bucks in the NFC title game? That Super Bowl loss that McNabb had? Um, the Alshon Jeffries drop? This thing here, man, because you know why? Arguably the best roster the team's ever had. And you lost to an inferior roster with a great quarterback and a great head coach. Shit happens. Foles did it. Eli did it. This is going to make for, I'll tell you this. This is going to be one of the most interesting off seasons in the history of the Philadelphia Eagles. On who stays, who goes, who do you draft, and most importantly, how much do you pay Jalen Hurts? Dude, Hurts is a priority. If I were them, I'd get to the table. Thank you, 85. As quick as I can. Don't let Burrow, don't let Lamar 
set the market value because you know what? Then you're going to be knocking on the $50 million door. And if you want a hometown discount, you know, the hometown discount is he who acts first. Remember that he who acts first gets the riches. He who acts, acts last gets the turds. <laughs> Should be a very interesting week, man. I can't wait to hear everybody talking. What's going to happen here, too? This thing's going to start real quick. This is going to start real quick. I appreciate everybody coming aboard. Please hit the like button. Um, Xander, great stuff. Our post-game show was spectacular. We thank everybody for being involved. Tone, you were great. As always today, I thank you very much. God bless you. We will see you tomorrow going 3 to 6 Eastern. We shall see you on the flip side. When it comes to the fight against insurance companies, large corporations, and the healthcare industry, injured victims are always the underdog. But that doesn't worry us. At Messon Associates, we're an injury law firm from Philadelphia, and we come to fight. Our clients know that they've got representation with a chip on its shoulder, and it's the same chip that makes Philly the toughest city in the country. Call 215-568-3500 or visit us online at messalaw.com. Messon Associates, the toughest injury firm in Philadelphia.